Welcome to the keynote. I'm Delatoro McNeil II, peak performance expert, best-selling author, and renowned keynote speaker. You're getting ready to journey into the lives of nine people from all across the country who are coming to spend the week with me in this multi-million dollar mansion so I can teach them how to become full-time speakers and authors, trainers and coaches. Public speaking is still the number one fear in America, Canada, and other parts of the world. You're about to journey into the lives of nine brave souls from extremely diverse backgrounds who all aspire to become professional speakers and authors in the lucrative industry of personal and professional development. I really want to leave my day job. It's time for me to take that next step. I believe that this is, this is the moment that I've been waiting for. Nine contestants have come from all across America to have the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be mentored by one of the best in the business today. They'll spend five days and nights in this multi-million dollar mansion, being treated like royalty and enjoying the opulent lifestyle of top professional speakers, all while being trained, coached, and mentored by Delatoro McNeil himself. They all have one goal in mind, to become the keynote. Each contestant hopes to prove to Delatoro that they have what it takes to earn a coveted keynote speaking opportunity at Delatoro's annual Leaderpreneurship Conference, the Full Throttle Experience. Over the course of five days, these contestants will be learning insider secrets as Delatoro shares his coveted 12-step blueprint for building a million-dollar speaking empire. Not only is he great, but he pours his greatness into other people. It was a good learning process, you know, being with your peers, although it is a competition. While being coached and mentored by Delatoro and his esteemed professional colleagues, these contestants will be pushed to the limits as they are tasked with impromptu challenges, exercises, and experiences that will get them one step closer to being Delatoro's personal protege for one year. Who will crack under the pressure? Who will win the hearts of their audiences? Who will overcome their fears? Who will become the keynote? My name's Bernadette Volkman. I'm 59 years old. I don't want to admit it, but I am. <laughs> I'm from Bradenton, Florida, and I am an entrepreneur. I wanted to uh, write a book, and uh, I met Mr. McNeil, and he encouraged me, so I am here. This is opening myself to people, which is kind of a scary thing, but I figure I have to get out of my own way if I want to help other people and share my story because there's a lot of people out there hurting. My name is Charles Carey, AKA Sir Charles. I'm 53 years old. In my current profession, I'm a senior specialist and a trainer for a government agency in Washington, D.C. My aspirations are to take my message to a much larger audience. I truly believe that it can make a difference if they hear someone that they can identify with. My name is Ira Funderburg. I'm 62 years old and I live in Northport, Florida. Currently I work in the water conditioning industry, been managing multi-million dollar businesses for over 30 years. I've done a lot of stuff, running sales organizations, I have online businesses that I've built, I've coached people. I found that one of the best ways that I can share that information with people is by speaking on stage. What I want to learn from Della Toro is some real specifics. Not only is he great, but he pours his greatness into other people. And I want to be around that so that I can pour into other people as well. My name is Dennis Burke. I'm 53 years of age. I live in Sarasota, Florida, and uh, I'm an entrepreneur and business owner. I'd like to uh, become a professional speaker and be able to inspire people all over the world with my message that uh, they can have prosperity and achievement in their life. My name is Jenny Olding and I'm 29 and I'm from Tampa, Florida and I'm a sales rep. 
I really want to leave my day job. It's time for me to take that next step and I'm really close to making that step. I'm coming here with an open mind and open heart. I know that if I'm gonna learn from one of the best, I wanna learn from Del Toro. If I can take so much of what he's gonna give and apply it to my current business to make it better. My name is Mel Keys. I'm 46 years young. I reside in San Antonio, Texas, where I'm a pastor. The biggest factor in my life that motivates me to really want to go out and speak to people is the issue of encouragement. I love to empower people. Del Toro is an expert in my key areas, entrepreneurship and leadership. I know that he's gonna help me to get to the next level in anything focused on those. Sean Duro, my age is 46. I live in Dallas, Texas, and I'm a financial advisor. At this point in my career, I wanna get into the consulting training space. I really enjoy helping others with their finances or as I call it, they're making their wealth shift. You know, I believe that if you're going to become great, you gotta learn from a great. And Del Toro certainly walks the walk and talks the talk. I'm Nikki Wilson. I'm 46 years old. I live in Largo, Florida. And my current profession, I am an advisor services associate and a financial firm. I definitely have a purpose in wanting to become a professional speaker. I'm very passionate about wanting to help veterans transition back into the civilian workforce. And I know that I just want to get on a tour bus and spread that word out and reach out to as many people as possible. I just really want to um, have that ripple effect. My name is Vicki Carpenter Duncan. I'm currently 43 years old. I live here in Tampa, Florida, and my current profession is a respiratory therapist. I, I just love people. I love empowering people, encouraging them, and to motivate them and, and create an environment to help them to grow. Every teacher knows when they're a student, and I don't come here with what all I know. I come to be groomed by a professional, Dale, who has been doing this for a while, and I want to grow. Welcome to the keynote. You know, I know why every single one of you all are here. You're here because you and I have something very special in common. We have a passion, we have a purpose, and we have a mission. And that's to change people's lives with our story, our message, and our content. So I've invited you all from across the country to come spend the week with me so I can teach you everything I've mastered over 15 years in one week. I'm looking for one of you all to rise above and earn the coveted opportunity to have a 20 minute keynote spot at my annual conference, The Full Throttle Experience, but you're gonna have to work. Over the next week that we have together, I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know from soup to nuts on how to build a powerful, purposeful, and profitable speaking and publishing business. Every time you compete in a challenge, you're gonna have an opportunity to win the mic. Now the mic is up for grabs every single day, which is a beautiful thing because the mic is a symbol of leadership, authority, and power in the speaking industry. Now, if I see you executing and you're not executing to your fullest potential, I might say this to you. Can I see you in the cellar? And when I say, can I see you in the cellar, that means that you and I need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation that everybody else doesn't need to hear. And we're gonna go down to the cellar and have a talk. But I guarantee you, at the end of that talk, you're gonna thank me because I'm gonna share something with you that's gonna help you grow and develop. Because I believe that every one of you in this room are already winners. Are you ready for your first task? Yes. You all have exactly one week to pull off your first live joint success seminar. You have to pick a hotel, you have to pick a name, you have to fill the audience with your peers and colleagues, family and friends. Each one of you all will have 10 minutes to give your best content and at the end, the audience and I and my special panel of judges are going to determine the keynote. So you've got a week to pull off your first event. So it's time to stop talking and it's time to start doing. Who's ready to be the keynote? Yes. Let's do it together. Yes. Be coachable. 
My friend, one of the skills that you can develop right now that's gonna help you grow as a speaker, as an author, as a business person, whatever it is that your particular purpose and passion is, is your ability to be coachable, which means that you can listen to what your advisor or your mentor is telling you. You can take action, that's the big thing, take action on what they tell you to do, and then be able to receive constructive criticism without getting offended, without getting disappointed, without getting an attitude, and thank them for their input in your life. I've been able to extract some of the greatest coaching and mentoring from some of the greatest people across the world because I was coachable. And that's what I look for in a mentee, is someone who's coachable. So if you wanna take your life to that next level, my friend, be coachable. You gotta pursue this business as a full-time passion, not a side hobby. If you water it part-time, it's gonna stay part-time. That means your lunch break's gotta be consumed by what you're working on. Your evenings gotta be consumed by what you're working on. Weekends gotta be consumed by what you're working on. Does that make sense? I'm a sponge. Um, I've been following Dell for over a year now, and I expected this. I believe that this is, this is the moment that I've been waiting for. You're gonna have to go through a season of hustle. Write it down, you need a season of hustle. I'm overwhelmed of just what's gonna be happening from what he, the training this evening. So it's like, oh Lord, what have I got myself into? Um, but it's good, it's just scary. But if you're willing to put in that season of hustle, I guarantee you, you're gonna come out on top. The beautiful part about being in this speaking industry is that if you hustle for a few good years, you can create a platform that you can then sustain yourself on for a long time. But you gotta be willing to go through a hustle season, a ramen noodles and hot sauce season. Does that make sense? Where it's tough, it's difficult, and you don't know how it's gonna work out, but you do. All right, number three, you gotta study this industry and work daily on mastering your craft. You can't be speaking every now and again. You gotta be speaking consistently, storytelling consistently knowing what's going on in the industry on a consistent basis. It's deep content, not only just being delivered to you, but you're learning why it's necessary to go this deep. Everything from now on is what, y'all? I can't hear you, everything is what? Creates and sells products and services that their target audience buys. You need to know, you need to be intimate with your target audience. Who is your target audience? And you gotta know them like the back of your hand. When you hear Vicki talk about cosmetologists, you hear the passion, she knows her audience. She knows what they struggle with, she knows their pain, and she's creating stuff to hit them right in between the eyes. That's exactly how you gotta be. When you hear Sean talk about couples that, that struggle with financial challenges, you hear that he knows his market. Does that make sense? Yes. Who is your market? Are you in bed with who your target market is? Ira, you've got to know everything about the highs, lows, ins and outs of people who are in transition, people who are starting over. People who are old dogs, but they got new tricks. But my mind started reeling on the, the point. How are you going to define that so that other people can really recognize the message that I'm trying to give them? And that's one of those stones that I'm going to continue to work on. I'm going to go up to my room tonight and study some more and get that point honed down to a fine, fine point. Email responder. If you think you're gonna be in this business and not have to respond to email and get a big check as a speaker, you've got it twisted. You really do. Right now, there's a little ooze coming out of my ears, both sides, so I, I, it's hard to tell. You know, I'm trying to, you know, weather the storm, so to speak, the mental storm, but it's good. It's good, all good. You're gonna have to respond to a bunch of email. I don't wanna do that, I wanna outsource that. Okay, then let the outsource person get the check. Client wants to hear from you. You're not in the room. Okay, let's keep going. Janitor, Jan so, so why a janitor, Del Toro? If you spent $500 to get full color brochures printed, you put, you put 100 of them out on seats. 30 people show up to the event. You mean to tell me you're gonna leave the other 70 sitting there? That you didn't, what? You gotta collect them jokers, hello, right? So you wait till everyone leaves. Don't do it right there, y'all, come on somebody. You gotta maintain your image, come on somebody. Wait till everybody leaves, all right? And then right before they start picking up all the plates and napkins, you walk around, you start, you know, boom. And you put them back in your, and you take them back home.
so how's everybody doing? Like, what's up, man? Is this like not cool or what? I mean, this is so fun. Well, good evening. Good evening. I'm Chef, I'm Chef Gaston. And your menu for tonight is obviously Caesar salad. You already started it. But we're also going to feature you chicken marsala with garlic, butter, mashed potatoes, um, mm. grilled asparagus. And also we're going to present to you a dessert of banana pasta. Wow. Okay? Nice. Yeah. All right, so en wow. enjoy your salad and we'll be bringing your entrees here shortly. Oh, didn't expect that. Really didn't. It was just fabulous. And that uh, banana foster. Oh, that was so, so good. The whole meal was delicious. The chef was so good, my wife would tell you, I don't eat bananas. And I've probably had bananas three times in my whole life. But I had some tonight, and I enjoyed it. Your number one job in this industry is not to make yourself look good. It's to make your client look good. So today is all about a conversation on what it means to be amazing. So while we're munching, I want us to go around real quick and talk. Like when you think of an amazing speaker, someone that you, if you had the budget to hire a speaker, what are some characteristics about that speaker? And then, and then I want you to name a characteristic that you also possess. And we're gonna go around the room. Zig Ziglar is the one that comes to my mind. His ability to, to communicate and relate to people with his stories. Mm -hmm. He had such great stories and mm -hmm. his colloquialisms of his growing up that people seem to relate with. And yeah. I think I can do that with him. The first person that came to mind was Danny Johnson. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely know that I can definitely be that energy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even as I develop more, bringing out more like in your face, ready to go, let's get it going, the sass, because right. that's what Danny has. I, I think about Bill Clinton and his incredible way of communicating as yes. well as Tony mm -hmm. Robbins, but the one that stands out for me is Bishop T.D. Jakes. And he has an incredible ability to not only connect with you, but seems to, in a church of 10,000 people, talk directly to you. The person that comes to mind for me is um, Joel Olsen. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Though small in stature, mm -hmm. he's an enormous human being as a communicator. Yeah. His storytelling abilities, mm -hmm. his ability to communicate with sincerity. Yeah. Uh, he's casual, he's friendly toward people, mm -hmm. and he establishes credibility on the front end very quickly. Engagement is very, very uh, important. You know, I'm a very diverse person and my interest is diverse. Things I like to learn is diverse. So when I give of myself, I like to give variety. You know, you never know who's in the audience right. mm -hmm. that needs to hear what you have to say. But if you say it only one way, right. you lose a lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the engagement is really important. Oh my goodness. I have not eaten that well in a long time and I ate the whole thing. I mean, the potatoes, the chicken, the asparagus, and then that banana's foster. You could have put a sparkler on it and I would have been deliriously happy. Welcome to day two of the keynote. Today you are in for an amazing day. I'm gonna be challenging you in the areas of building your brand, marketing your concept and your message. I'm gonna challenge you with the impromptu activities around getting quick on the quotes. You're gonna speak quite a bit today. When Del Toro mentioned that we were gonna do our first speaking exercise, I was a little nervous, a little apprehensive, but I was very much ready because I know that's why I'm here. So I was ready to go, but at the same time, I knew that the nerves would set in. Later on this evening, we're gonna be hopping on the minibus and you're gonna be traveling to a local Toastmasters club where a group of about 30 folks are gonna be waiting for you all to give a five minute presentation and you will be evaluated using Poll Everywhere and we will select a winner tonight as to who deserves to win the mic and who is one step closer to becoming the keynote. So the pressure is on, the time is now, today is the day, bring your A game or you're gonna meet me in the cellar. <laughs> Welcome to day number two of the keynote.
What I love about Quick on the Quotes is that it challenges speakers to speak what we call extemporaneously or impromptu. So what I do is I give them a quote, they have to then expound on that quote, wrap their brand or their story around the quote and get out. So it's get in, get out, but they've got two minutes to do it. So I love this activity because it makes speakers get to the point and say something powerful in a short amount of time. Let's see how they do. I'm looking for the first volunteer who's ready to go first. I volunteered to go first on Quick on the Quotes because I wanted to just jump on the roll and give it what I had up front. And it also helped get rid of the nerves off the back so I could take better notes of what other people were doing as well. Never give up on a dream because of the time that it will take to accomplish it. Because the time is gonna pass anyway. If any of you here ever had a dream that you thought you wanted to do, but you just never seem to get around to it. Anybody here? That's probably the first time that I've ever had to come up with something on the fly when I didn't know what I was gonna have to talk about. And it was a challenge. When you learn those basic steps and you take that action, you can do anything, folks. You can do anything. Have you had that happen to you before? Thank you. Good job. I'm gonna have you do that again. I'm gonna have you do it again. Sure. Go ahead, go back up. All right. Footnote to everyone, get to the point faster. If you're gonna tell your story, you gotta be quick, you got two minutes. In your mind, two minutes should feel like this. I've got 30 seconds to open, 30 seconds to close, which gives me how much time of content? One minute. One minute. A minute. When I first started, I felt fairly stiff yeah, and uncomfortable, and I think that was because I, my mind was kinda of trying to find its train of thought. But as that developed, as I'm talking, I kinda of felt like I got into my own skin. Hi folks, my name is Ira Funderburg. I'm a career breakthrough strategist. And I'm here to help you understand that you can do anything that you want to do if you take action on it. In 1993, I attended a conference with speakers, motivational speakers and trainers. And at the end of that conference, one of the things I had written on a piece of paper was that I wanted to be a speaker on stage. I got home, I reread my notes, and I put it in the drawer. Never took any action. 30 years passed. Those 30 years have gone. I can't recapture them. About three, four months ago, I decided it's time to take action. And I pulled it out of the drawer and I looked at it and I said, I'm gonna do this. And it's three short months. I'm standing here on stage talking to you about how you can do anything you want to do if you simply take action. You are now and you do become what you think about. My name is Dennis Burke. And I was born and raised in a small I actually island. am familiar with Earl Nightingale because he's the famous author of the uh, audio, The Strangest Secret. <laughs> and I call on you to give me the opportunity. My number is... Start over. When Del Toro stopped a few of us, it was very intimidating. I said, oh no, I don't want that to be me. All right, two problems. One, number one, your feet are in the concrete. You will free yourself up mentally when you give yourself the freedom to move around. Now, I don't want you to, you don't have to bounce around, but you got to get your feet out of the concrete. Okay, so kind of like an Albert Einstein pensive mode kind of thing? Just, just engage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys are true. One of the things I discovered early is you're going to get back what you put out. You're going to reap what you sow. I didn't want to go first. <laughs> but when I watched what the others were doing, I was able to kind of draw and say, okay, this is the direction I need to go. But I wanted something different, and I'm sure that you do too, and that's why you're here today. And I guarantee you that life is going to give you back the attitude that you've put up in the atmosphere. We are all self-made, but only the successful admit it. I'm Jenny Olding. And I'm a lifestyle strategist. I'm actually your lifestyle strategist. Because if you feel like you're not a success, as success is defined in your life, you've got two options. 30 seconds. Number one, you can stop complaining about it and accept your circumstances. Or number two, you can do something about and change it. A person who does not read is no better than a person who cannot read. Everybody is reading you. We all are a brand, and it's a brand called you. So when they see you, what are they really reading? Everything begins with an idea. Everything begins with an ideal. My grandfather used to tell me, if you want to be great, you have to go to the best nation in the world. And that's your imagination. 
Sean was on spot. He just went with it and ran. I mean, you could tell he's a very polished speaker. What is it that's preventing them from making that shift that they desire? And I'm here to tell you that each and every one of you right now can go to the level that you desire when it comes to your wealth. My brother Sean is incredible. He underestimates what he has inside of himself. And I am so tired of seeing people battle and depressed because they are not where they are wanting to be with their finances. Great job, great, I mean, the whole thing was awesome. Thanks, sir. I want you to work on your clothes. Okay. All right, but great job, absolutely great job. And then I decided that I really needed to fit in. And I started fitting in only to find out I was really fitting in in the wrong places. <laughs> you see, I dug a ditch, a hole for my life. You know, after listening to a few of the other speakers, which I thought was a good advantage point to take, uh, I got a little more comfortable and, you know, started thinking it through. And it was a good learning process, you know, being with your peers, although it is a competition. Let me share with you how you can not only get where you want to be, but where you need to be. You see, the cure for, you fill in the blank is what I can take you to. Sir? That was nice. The cure for you fill in the blank. The fill in the blank statement was something I just thought about right then and there. You know, I didn't know I was gonna go there, but uh, I'm glad it worked. Every one of us is the sum total of our own thoughts. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a crazy big idea, this thought, that's tucked within your head, in your heart, and you really, really want to pursue it. She was a little bit stiff on the beginning, but then she got into herself and she became the warrior on stage and she just nailed it. I can help you tap into that warrior spirit. I can help you pull out that crazy big idea and I can make it rebirth for you. So if you want to follow that crazy big idea, please call me. I really thought about my message because for them that was what it was about was really making that connection and telling their message so I did a little warm-up and it just really went out there and and really threw it out there that was awesome you did a great job I felt like you were presenting for the first 30 seconds yeah and then the warrior came out yeah what I want to challenge you to do is from the second you touch the stage that stage belongs to the warrior mm -hmm. Success is the progressive realization the of a worthy goal. Is the progressive realization progressive. of a worthy goal. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal. There you go. Well, I was like, oh, Lord, I am going to go to the dungeon, which is where, you know, we get told you know, what we should be doing. And I was like, oh, Lord. And I said, if I'm the last one, then uh, maybe he won't be as hard on me. <laughs> My name is Bernadette Volkman, but hopefully we'll be friends by the end of this conference. You can call me Bernie. All my friends call me Bernie. <laughs> Success, boy, definitely is a realization of a goal. I was not a goal-oriented person all my life. I worked in the operating room for years. I enjoyed my career. I just stopped enjoying it. How many people out here really dread getting in their car and driving into a job that they really don't enjoy? Thank you very much. Good job, Bernie. Good job. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> you all did a fantastic job. I'm very, very proud of you. And um, how did that feel? Good? Yeah. You all did a great job. You guys did a great job. Um, man, wow, this one's tough. This one's tough. But we do have one person that I feel did an exceptional job uh, and has earned the mic. And I'd like to give the mic to Mr. Sean DeRoe. The one thing that I learned about myself is that I can stand amongst great speakers, a great trainer, and get up and take everything that he is pouring in me, everything that I'm learning from the other speakers, and I can instantly apply it to my brand and to my message. And that, that was the biggest takeaway. Just was just impressed with how he just flowed with his speech. So I was very happy for him. And when he was done, I gave him the high five because we're all rooting for each other and that's what we're here to help each other. I think you did a fantastic job with your open. 
I really loved your stage presence and your style, your confidence and your clarity of your message and why people need it. And one of the things that I really enjoyed the most is that you really did a good job at expressing the pain points. Yes. Not only the audience's pain points, but your own pain points. What frustrates you and why you created your concept. And I think that drew all of us in. You know, the person I thought that was gonna win was Nikki. I thought her deliverance was incredible. Her presence was powerful, and I just knew that she would be the one holding the mic. I was actually surprised when she wasn't. When I didn't get the, the mic, it, well, you know, it, it, it hurt a little bit, but it just made me hungrier to work harder and to really improve, you know, my speaking. You all did absolutely a great job. I'm very, very proud of you all, and this is what it's all about. This, supporting each other, loving each other, and doing your best and bringing your A game. And all of you all have something to learn from each other in terms of how you all present it and how you deliver. Be a business person first and a speaker second. You know, so oftentimes I talk to people who say, Del Toro, I want to do this, I want to be this, I want to have this, I want to achieve this. And they talk about what their passion is. And I'm excited about their passion, but the truth is, what gets you paid is not necessarily your passion. It's how you execute your passion to solve a business need. People pay people to solve problems. So what we have to learn how to do is be business people first and speakers second or business person first, and whatever your passion is, second. Because if you aren't a good business person, you're not gonna be in business long. You might have a great vision, you might have a great idea, you might have a great aspiration, but if you don't put the business, there, my friend, you gotta understand something. There is a business behind everything. I don't care what it is, there is a business model behind it. So what I trained my speakers and authors to understand is that they have to be a business person first and a speaker and publisher second. And I'm gonna say the same thing to you. Whatever you want to aspire towards in your life, be a business leader of that thing first and let your talent come second place. <laughs> Guys, bring your A game. We got a lot of folks who've been working hard for you all, so make sure you're overly nice to everybody. Sure. Give them tremendous love because they've been working really hard to put this on for you. I think we're probably gonna have probably about 40, 50 folks wow. there wow. To, uh, to see you do your thing tonight. So it's gonna be really, really incredible. You're each gonna have five minutes to rock out. You all will be evaluated individually. So uh, let's make this amazing, let's make it awesome. And let's show them what the keynote's all about. All right, we have a special event tonight. Woo! Tonight, instead of our normal meeting, <laughs> we have Mr. Delatore McNeil, I am so excited, delighted, and honored to be here. Del Toro McNeil II, and I am so excited to present to you all tonight the keynote. We have nine amazing contestants who have come from all across the country, and they're excited. And I said, the best place, the first place, I want to take these amazing students to see if they've really got what it takes to become the keynote is where I got started. We're actually going to have each one of the contestants give a brief five minute presentation. I asked them to come and bring their A game to Carrollwood Toastmasters, and I want you all to evaluate them and help me evaluate them. And I also invited a very special friend of mine, all the way from Orlando, but similar to me, travels all over the world, uh, renowned, world renowned, internationally renowned um, keynote speaker, sales trainer, I mean, just ninja, best selling author. She's a great friend of mine. We've been mastermind partners for many years. She drove all the way down from Orlando. She has to keynote in Vegas tomorrow morning and came down to be with us here tonight. Her name is Monica Walford. Put your hands together for Monica. I want you to help me make a decision because every time these contestants compete in an the activity, they get a chance to earn the mic. So tonight, we're gonna to be giving away the mic and you're gonna get a chance to participate in a poll via text message to tell us who was the best presenter of the evening. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our very first presenter, my good buddy all the way from Sarasota, Florida. Put your hands together for Mr. Ira Funderburg. I think you're, all of us, we're trying to give it a really our A game. More so than, you know, when you go to Toastmasters on a day, uh, I go weekly and I speak often. And in those meetings, it feels like I'm practicing. In this meeting, it felt like I had to deliver. And that was really the main difference. I go in, and he says, is it true you made 18 presentations last week? Go, yeah. He says, is it true you only sold an $18 pair of kitchen shears? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, you probably want my kit back. He goes, no, no. 
He said, did you try the presentation that we taught you? I go, well, you know, I never really liked canned presentations. Yeah, and, uh, you know, he says, well, do me a favor. Would you try it one time? Would you go out after this meeting and get one presentation, just one, and see if it makes a difference for you? So we did. I went out, knocked on doors, got a presentation. Folks, I sold $1,000 set of knives in one presentation in 1975. Woo! 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 Excellent. Well done and really enjoyed it. Mr. Charles Carey! Let me ask you this question. Have you ever found yourself in a position that you didn't want to be in and then found it difficult to get out of it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you tried many times, but you still found yourself in the same exact position. Mm -hmm. Has that ever happened to anyone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, let me share this with you. For 25 years of my life, I was a substance abuser. Crack cocaine every single day. Wow. You know, I never really thought my life would be in that position or that I would live a life or a lifestyle that was so, uh, you know what I mean? The guys once said, I never met a mic that I didn't like. So when you have the stage, you know, that's your opportunity. But time is your challenge. So for me to have more time, I always need time. I feel I need time to be able to convey that message. And then it's about choosing the right part of the message or the right message itself so that you can have that impactful story. You want to reach as many people as possible. So whether it's a sad story, or a heartwarming story, or you know, a happy story, you know, you want to make sure you get the right story that, that just does that. And sometimes when you have the time, you get the opportunity of doing all of the above. And say it with me now on the biggest piece of feedback. Pause. Pause. <laughs> Let's continue to keep the party rolling. I want you all to put your hands together for the amazing Vicki Carpenter Duncan. Yeah. Put your hands together for y'all. Mm -hmm. It is your time and it is your season. Whatever is on, on the inside of you, whatever is in your heart, whatever you have the desire to do, it's time to do it now. I want you to know that you are great. Oh my God, Sean, Sean can you do it? Can do it. Bernie, uh -huh. can you do it? I can do it. You can do mm -hmm. it. Yeah. If you don't get anything else from this message today, know that you can do it. Oh. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're pausing. Vicki, let's do it again. Um, I want you to do it again, and this time I want content. Right? Yes. I want that you can do it. It's beautiful. But I need substance. This is the keynote. Everybody knows we can speak. Everybody knows we got energy. What people need is how-to steps. So come, what did I tell you earlier today? Let it out. What Go you did, there. You, you are, you, yeah. tell us who you are. Yes. Well, you know, one, it was awesome just having my, having being coached by my mentor and then having the power that he, he's instilled in us and being able to go out and execute. And knowing that he's there, not only watching from a coach perspective, but knowing that he's got my back for strength. And I think that was just huge. How okay. Do How did you do it? Okay. Give us three steps. Three steps. Okay. How many, do you still believe you can do it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I believe I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. I can do it because I'm back up on the stage again. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and tell you who I am. I'm Vicki Carpenter Duncan, hailing all the way for you from Brandon, Florida. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, I, I am an entrepreneur strategist. That's who I am. That's what makes the difference. You got to shift in your mind, shift in your heart, and step out. And that's how you do it. Good job. That's what I'm talking about. One of the number one things you hear a chief complaint about fabulous motivational speakers is that for five minutes after the speech, you're motivated and walking on air. The next day, you can't remember the name of the speaker. That's a problem, particularly for longevity in one's business. Yeah. 
So give us that content. And I love the way that you brought out shift your head, shift your heart, and step out. That's it. That was the nugget at the end that you used as you were finding your way through how to articulate each piece of the content. Why are you emotional right now? You know, like I was sharing with the audience, you know, when you have greatness on the inside of you, and you know you're called to help others to pull it out of them. But you got to grace yourself <laughs> so you can help grace them. This was very a breaking for me because although you're in a room full of like-minded people, you know, and it's wonderful to be in that atmosphere, you know, you're getting the support and everything, but it was also real. And um, basically, at the time when I'm, I was talking and giving my presentation, you can do it. It was welling up on the inside of me as well. And so um, I wanted to give more, but it's almost like I had to end it in order to keep my composure. So I stepped off stage like, I'm done. It's okay, I'm done. It's, it's all right, even if I don't get the mic tonight, at least I got, you can do it across, you know? So. Being that I've spoken at Toastmasters before, tonight was different because Della Toro was there and Monica Wofford was there, two speakers who I admire, and I knew that I had to bring it. Please put your hands together for none other than Jenny Olding. <laughs> Tour and I went through my life and I did everything I was supposed to do. Went to college, got good grades, I did well in sports, I got a full ride, I traveled all over the world, I did awesome in sales, I did all these great things, that's wonderful. But then when it comes time to actually do what I want to do, when it comes time to do what you want to do, do you take the leap and do it? Do you stay sitting in your chair, afraid to stand up and do it? Because you've got so much energy, it's just like pew 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 pew. And I want to, I want you, I want you to harness it. I didn't mean to say H quite that long, but I, I want you to harness it because I'm the same way. I'm like la 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 la. How much fun! But there are some people in the audience who will have accused you of of having had Mountain Dew for breakfast, <laughs> and about five minutes of that. They'll tune you out. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the one and only Pastor Mel Keys. <laughs> Let me tell you why it's so important that I hope you fail. Because most of us, and I'll start with me, we hold on to all kinds of things in our lives that hold us back from the success and the significance that I believe that we can have. And there are three things I want to share with you tonight, very briefly, that have held me back. And I believe with everything in me tonight, that is probably holding someone else back as well. I enjoy the connection you made with the audience. It is very evident, very, very clear. This is not your first rodeo, and you are comfortable in your own skin. The pacing was spot on, the positioning, and there was no thought to it. There wasn't a rehearsed, okay, tell this story, turn over here, and then pivot. There, there was none of that going on. You were having a conversation with each one of us to a whole room of people. And I'm excited about presenting to you, Miss Nikki Wilson. And it got to the point where I knew I needed to make a change, a big change. So on a spontaneous moment, I walked into a Navy recruiter's office and I said I wanted to see the world. It was kind of like a Private Benjamin thing, you know, go on a cruise ship, travel around, avoid my student loans. So he must have looked at me with my purple hair and thought, oh, I've got a great candidate. So I enlisted in the Navy and my family and friends were shocked. First they thought, you're never going to pass the drug test. <laughs> and when you get kicked out of basic training, we'll be here for you. Right. So I went in, wearing my rather trendy clothes into basic training, 
my hair just absolutely fabulous. They told me to put on these sweats, put them in a box, and I was shipping them home, and they shaved my hair off. <laughs> they took my contact lenses out, and I had these what they call birth control glasses in the military. <laughs> <laughs> And that's when the transformation began. So I really enjoyed that. I love the Navy. I love the, you know, the Navy taught me that. Navy taught me that. Navy taught me that. When every time you kept, it was just like you were just paying homage to your history and, and the, your evolution and you were proud of it. And it made us say, okay, well, what do I have to be, what am I proud of in my own evolution? And I want to be able to stand flat footed like that and be that proud of my evolution and my journey. It was a huge stretch for me to deliver that message because usually I, I'm kind of humorous in my speaking and I wanted to be as real, as full of content as possible and really throw my passion into it and, and make a connection. So it was a little scary because they're used to seeing me uh, act up and being silly and, and I was being real with them. So that was, yeah, it was, it was a huge stretch. I was listening to all the other wonderful speakers and I made a, a mistake of changing what I was going to talk about. It was like, oh, I'll do this. And then I kind of went up there and then I ripped the scab off, which I probably shouldn't have in front of everybody. And I was trying to help him, but then as emotional as I was, I was like, well, how could she be qualified to help me? She's a wreck. I'm not, but I was actually, my feelings were coming out. And it was like, boom, I'm ripping off this Band-Aid. I'm ripping off this scab and it's pain. And I was trying to share it with people. You know, I was always told you're stupid, you can't do this. You know, my mother was a school teacher, very critical school teacher. So, you know, I would go home, it was wrong. If I did it right, it was, oh, not good enough still. Just those struggles that people have in their lives. So I just said, okay, I'm going to go forward, I'm going to push forward, and I want to help other people if, in their struggles like this in their lives. And you did step out of your comfort zone. Literally. In fact, I would even say for future presentations, let, let's use that dynamic, that staging, as a repeatable emphasis of your points. When it came to about the fourth or fifth person, I saw all the energy in the room. I figured, hey, you know, I need to shift gears somehow. I need to come up with a different uh, uh, approach here, a different topic. And it just happens that I had that uh, speech prepared previously, and I had recalled that speech. And so I figured with tweaking it out a little bit, I'd give it a shot. Who present loves a winning story? Who present loves a great entrepreneurial story embraced in lots of adversity? My name is Dennis Burke. I was born and raised on a small island off the southern coast of Ireland, eight miles in the ocean. I grew up there in the 1960s and the 1970s. When I was a little boy, we had no indoor plumbing. We had no electricity. We had lanterns and gas lamps. But you know what? We had stuff that you can't buy. We got a value system. We got work ethics. We were taught unbelievable things that people today in schools here in America and in Ireland are not taught. <laughs> High five. <laughs> you are a gifted storyteller. Yes, yes. 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 I have a, a personal connection with Ireland, so I, I could sit and listen to your accent for days. I think everyone in the audience found it to be somewhat charming, and there's a certain lilt to your voice, and there's a certain rhythm and a certain cadence that adds to the ability to tell the story even better. Charles Carey, I need to see you in the cellar. Charles Carey. Yes, sir. Finish this quote for me. You cannot do the same thing over and over again. Expecting different results. You remind me of that quote. Okay. When you came into my space, you said, Del Toro, I've been doing a lot of the same thing a long time, but I haven't been pleased with my results. Right. Um, I think you're phenomenal. Okay, I think you. I think you're awesome. I think you've overcome hell and high water to the nth degree. Appreciate that. I know you have. 
and you have a presence, you have a charisma, you have a look, you have a style, you have a message. But again, I sense something missing. And what I sense is missing is I feel like for some reason you're trying to hold on to a past Charles Carey that is gone. The era has moved on and you have to now play catch up. Mm. I want to help you produce a different new result in your business. Okay. I had you fill out a form before you came and spent time with me. Right. On that form I asked some questions. Yes. I was a little surprised at some of the answers. Okay. For someone who's been in this game as long as you have. Right. So we got to do some new things Mm -hmm. so that we can get some new New results. results. And you have to let go of the old carry. Mm. Okay. And my question is, are you willing to do that? I mean, are you really, really willing to do that? Because, man, I believe that you got what it takes to really be very, very successful in this game. But here's what you've mastered that I see through. Okay. You've mastered a glaze and a polished veneer that gives the appearance of a level in this game that I feel like you're still aspiring to get to. And that's got to be difficult to keep that up. Mm -hmm. When you can tell the same story the exact same way, pauses, enunciation, intonation of your voice, everything, You're telling me a story. You're not connecting with me. I want you to get to a place where you begin to wow your audiences and your audiences see you as a phenomenal keynote speaker and life transforming trainer. Not a novelty act. Your compensation is dependent upon your ability to shift from novelty act to transformational communicator and in order to get to that Charles you got to let the polish go Hmm. and I'm not talking about how you dress I'm talking about how you deliver I'm talking about the place that you come from Mm -hmm. Hmm. what's running through you talk to me well you know something I gotta not just generally work on but something I gotta identify because when I present in whatever format training speaking I'm giving what I know I'm giving what I feel what I experience Mm -hmm. and you know it's like when you prepare Mm -hmm. to do what we do you want it to be on point right you know you want the information delivered you don't want to leave anything out Mm mm-hmm so you prepare in a manner that you make sure all the ducks are lined up yep. and you make sure that you deliver them in the right order. Mm-hmm. Big, small, small, big, medium, whatever that may be. Right. And to me, from what I understand, from what we do, it's always about giving them all that you have. Right. And I can keep adding stories or changing stories, subtracting stories, but... But you're not doing that. I've heard you speak a number of times. I've mm-hmm. watched all your videos online. Right. They're good, mm-hmm. but I'm still waiting for. Let me just let me let me, yeah. let me let me shoot you straight. Okay. If I had overcome the hell you've been through, right. I would be ten times more demonstrative in my presentation. Oh, okay. So maybe that's what it is. My demeanor is not that type of person. And that's fine. But what I'm saying to you is, it comes across too polished to rehearsed and you had Monica say the same thing to you mm-hmm. who does not know you didn't watch your videos right so other people are feeling the same way and if that's happening could it be that there's clients not booking you for that reason yeah, I'm trying to get you more money Definitely I'm be. trying to get you paid and right. what I'm saying is now audiences want to see not just the transparency in the vocabulary of what you say it's got to come. Emotion. It's got to come through in the emotion of it, and you're saying all the right stuff even now. Mm-hmm. 
but the emotion of it is somewhat removed. Mm. I get that. I get that. So I feel like you kind of, you tuck the, the real Charles Carey here, you put on speaker trainer, you tell the story, but the emotion behind the story to me is somewhat missing. Mm. And if I'd been through the hell you've been through, I'd be, what? Man, my mom died in April of 2013. Okay. I've gotten 10 times more aggressive mm -hmm. in my presentation game because of that tragedy. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, don't, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what it's like to be diagnosed right. and deal with some of the stuff you've been through. Right. But all I know is that when tragedy has hit my life, mm -hmm. it's made me say, the hell with it. I don't care what people think, I'm gonna do me. But I'm gonna pull as many people out of my audience out of the hell that they're in. And I'm gonna do it by any means necessary. And that's what I need from you. Not Del Toro's way, Charles's way. Gotcha. I gotta find that path within me. Yes. To do that. I gotta find that path within me to do that because if everything else is in me, that, that's in me too. Yes. That's there too. Yes. It's just about either releasing the door or allowing it to come forth. Trust, you have to allow it. And you got, a, you got a lid on it. And I'm your friend enough and your mentor enough to tell you the truth. Well, I appreciate that. It's blocking your business growth. Okay, I received that completely. Thank we got, you. We got, we got to take it to the next level, bro. Yeah, All right, yeah. so tell me one thing that you're gonna do right now to try to maybe uncap the bottle lid a little bit. What's one thing that you know that you tend to do? Well, I always try to keep it in, in intact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that if you get too emotional, you fall off track with all your points. Mm -hmm. So it's, maybe, it, maybe less points, more sincerity. Mm. That's what I'm missing, bro. I'm missing this piece right here. You got the three points in poem down, you got the intro down, you got the close down, you got the summarize and restate down. You have all of the mechanics. I'm missing the heart. Gotcha. New I day. gotta let it go. New day? Yeah, absolutely. Promise? Yeah. Love you, man. I don't have no choice. You gotta do this right. All right. <laughs> That's you. what you said to me. Yeah. You said to me, this is my last stance, Del Toro. Yeah. You told me that. That's right, because it's true. So I need you to go all in, all in, all, all right. in. You got it, you got it. Bless you, man. Thank you. On the next episode of the keynote, the winner of the infamous Toastmasters challenge will be revealed. And one contestant will be one step closer to becoming the keynote. Upon getting back on the minibus and going back to the mansion, I revealed to the contestants their next challenge in which they'll have exactly one night to prepare an inspirational presentation to a large group of inner city youth. I wanna know who will rise to the occasion and empower the next generation. Who's next to go into the cellar? Who's gonna show me that they've got what it takes to become the keynote?